nice to see you again. It's nice to be here. Prime Minister, thank you so much for taking the time. Well, thanks for having me back, actually. Yeah. Okay, it's a pleasure. Um, at this point in the campaign, you want people to focus on the economy. Right. On the real choice, yeah. We think the choice is pretty clear. But for a lot of people, it is really about you. You have your very staunch supporters and you have people who basically want to get rid of you above all else. Are you worried that the issues you care about will be eclipsed because of the focus on your continuing leadership? No, I don't think that is the issue to people. I, think, I don't think people are focused on me and I don't think, contrary to what the other guys think, they're focused on them either. The people are focused on their own families and I think also on how the choice will affect the wider community and society and economy they're part of. And as you know, we think the choice is pretty clear. Uh, we're making people some commitments in terms of some additional benefits, some things for the economy. They're modest, um, but we can pay for them. We don't have to raise people's taxes and we don't have to run deficits. When it comes to Zoomers, your opponents are promising to reverse your decision on the age of eligibility for old age security. They're promising to leave it or put it back to 65 instead of raising it to 67. Why do you disagree with that? Well, you know, that only comes into effect. We phase that in very gradually beginning in the year 2023, so it doesn't affect any present retirees. It gives people a lot of time to adjust. Most Western countries are doing this because of the changing demographics. Um, this doesn't affect other programs, Canada Pension Plan, tax-free savings accounts. We're giving people additional options to make sure they can save for retirement and uh, get rewarded for doing so. And th that's another big difference in this campaign. Yeah, they're promising something in 2023, but what the other guys are promising right now for working people who are planning for retirement, the Liberal Party, is a thousand dollars hike to your payroll taxes for Canada Pension Plan, which will come off of your paycheck and another thousand dollars off of your employer. Most employers say they're going to cut jobs if that happens, and of course that's going to affect people's pocketbooks. So instead, we have options like tax-free savings accounts where people can actually get tax breaks for saving. Let's talk about that for a yeah. minute. So that's that's been a major focus of your campaign, it opposing has the Ontario Supplementary Pension Plan. Well, and the, a national version. And a national version of that. Yeah. Um, and you're focusing on the cost to both individual right. taxpayers and to business. But for a lot of Zoomers, they simply see this as something that they would like to do for their children and grandchildren because they know it, it, it won't help them and they're worried about the future. Uh, actually, I haven't met people who really want this at all. I don't think there's any evidence that people want. Nobody is asking for a compulsory payroll deduction um, to, uh, to pay for savings. People are asking for tax breaks that we're giving so they can actually save or if they don't want to save they're doing other things like buying homes or saving in the registered education savings plans. I think people are asking to make their own decisions on this. I don't meet businesses and I don't meet workers who are saying please take more money off of my paycheck to allow politicians to manage my retirement for me. I just, I, I'm just not hearing that and I notice the other guys aren't talking a lot about it precisely because they know that if people understand this is what they're saying, they will be very concerned. With respect, I, I've met a lot of people who say, uh, I'm worried about my children, my grandchildren, whose standard of living probably won't be as high as mine was, and, and I'm willing to do this for them. Well, this is going to hit every worker, and ultimately this doesn't transfer to other people. The money that comes off ultimately is supposed to go into your own account, um, but you'll see it years from now. People I meet say, I would like to make those savings decisions myself in our own plans. We already have a large deduction for Canada Pension Plan as it is, nearly 5% of a worker's income, 5% for their employer. So um, look, uh, there's lots of, there are lots of options we're giving, and as I say, I just, this to me, um, you know, I'm, I'm hearing from business, I'm hearing from workers, we don't need a hit on our take-home pay. We don't need a hit on our payroll. Um, we need to create, keep growing jobs and keep revenues growing for the middle class, and that's what our plan is designed to do. Okay, we'll move right along yeah. then. A lot of people were surprised at the prominence that the whole niqab issue got, uh, seeing as how it affects so few people. And, and your detractors say 
you manufactured it. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it's quite the opposite. We've, we've had a long-standing policy, a policy that is in line with the values and views of vast, vast majority of Canadians, values of openness and equality. And it's become an issue because the other parties have taken positions that are, frankly, radically offside um, how Canadians see our society. And really, I think that's ultimately for them to explain. Um, we've got a position, as I say, that's long-standing that people are very comfortable with and that we, we, we obviously believe reflects the values of Canadian society. Uh, do you have a reaction to the fact that Zanure Shack took her Canadian citizenship? I'm, I'm not going to comment on specific cases, but as you know, uh, our policy is that when you're joining the Canadian family, uh, becoming a member of our country as an open society, one should reveal one's identity. Do you think the issue got too much play? Um, I'll, you know, as I say, the, it would have no play if the other parties were simply on side with the values of the vast majority of Canadians. So, uh, look, there's dozens of issues in election. Um, I still believe the most important issue is the economy, keeping people's taxes down, making sure people have more options and that we're creating jobs. And I think, as I say, the alternative, uh, payroll tax hikes, cutting jobs, um, putting our economy at risk when we have so many challenges in the world economy is is ultimately what is the most important thing for hardworking families. Okay, and now on the refugee issue, you've said many times that your focus is on the persecuted minorities. And again, your detractors say that shows you're, you're anti-Muslim. Well, it's quite, quite the contrary. Many of the, uh, many of the persecuted minorities are actually Muslim minorities. There are Muslim minorities as well as Christian and other minorities. Uh, look, um, you and I have talked about this before. Yeah. We've got this terrorist organization, the so-called Islamic State and its allies, holding parts of Syria and Iraq, and one of their stated objectives is to wipe out, is to wipe out, exterminate people who are not like them. And um, that's one of the reasons, obviously, why uh, we are trying to prioritize. I mean, it's not, a, it's not an exclusionary thing, but we try and prioritize those refugees who are most at risk of, um, of being killed. And um, that is by no means uh, uh, restricted to non-Muslims. Uh, Muslim minorities are uh, very endangered. In fact, the Aga Khan, the head of worldwide head of the Ismaili community, and I have spoken about this many times, uh, they are very worried about the future of their community in that country, which is targeted by IS for elimination. Okay, final question. Uh, did you or your campaign underestimate Justin Trudeau? Uh, look, I, I don't think we ever underestimate our opponents. Um, we will see on election day what the voters actually uh, ultimately decide. But um, we always take our opponents, the Liberal Party in particular, very seriously. The Liberal Party has won uh, more elections historically than we have, so we never underestimate them. But I also don't underestimate the judgment of Canadians. And I think when you get past the, the good slogans and the platitudes and you actually look at the platforms and you actually look at how they will affect people's lives, people will say, the benefits I have I want to keep and the benefits I'm being promised I want to know they can be afforded and I will actually get. And I want to make sure our economy stays on track and we don't take any uh, risks unnecessarily uh, just, uh, just for the sake of doing so. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.